The 2024 Formula One grid remains unchanged from the one that finished 2023, but how we feel about some of the drivers on it has changed massively over the past 12 months. One rookie was absolutely outstanding, while another barely did enough to keep his seat. There were surprises among the more established drivers too, as some performed incredibly well, while others seriously underwhelmed us. So how does that tip the balance across the 10 driver lineups in F1? We asked our team of experts to rank the 2024 F1 driver lineups from worst to best, based entirely on driver ability. We then applied the F1 point system to those rankings to create our definitive verdict on which teams have the strongest and weakest lineups on the current grid. We've also compared the final results to our ranking from last year, and although only one driver, Daniel Ricciardo, has come onto the grid since we made that ranking, another 12 months of data and performance analysis means our feelings about where these lineups now rank has most definitely shifted significantly. It's all subjective of course, and no doubt you guys have your own views, so let us know what your ranking would be in the comments below, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel for loads more F1 content as we build up to the 2024 car launches. Number 10, Stake F1, not Sauber. Valtteri Bottas and Zhou Guan Yu, 22 points, down two places. Seven of our nine strong panel voted this pairing in the bottom two this year, suggesting collective faith in Bottas and Zhou is crumbling. Some of the old weaknesses in racecraft, tyre management and consistency that undid Bottas at Mercedes are resurfacing in the eyes of our experts, and Bottas is also taking a reputational hit from other drivers, Alex Albon in particular, working wonders in similarly limited midfield teams. Bottas's post-Mercedes career is in danger of drifting into underwhelming post-Ferrari Kimi Raikkonen territory, and if you were picking one driver from the bottom four teams in the championship to be your leader, there are probably now at least three or four ahead of Bottas in that queue. The fact Zhou remains that bit slower than Bottas still, despite gaining experience, means he's unable to drag this lineup from the bottom of our ranking. Number 9. Williams, Alex Albon and Logan Sargent. 25 points, up one place. Not much to choose between the Williams pair and the stake lineup overall, with the key difference being that four of our nine panellists ranked Albon and Sargent inside their top eight. Obviously, the key differentiator here is Albon, whose consistently excellent performances in almost single-handedly dragging Williams up to 8th in the Constructors' Championship were enough to bag him a place in the top 6 of our individual driver rankings for 2023. Sargent weighs heavy on this lineup's overall potential, with our panel pretty much united in feeling he has yet to convince anyone he's capable of performing properly at F1 level, and is basically acting as a placeholder for Williams until seriously exciting rookies such as Andrea Kimi Antonelli or Oli Behrman come onto the driver market for 2025. Number 8. Haas, Nico Hülkenberg and Kevin Magnussen. 34 points, down one place. This lineup could easily have found itself in stake slash Williams territory in our ranking, but two things saved it from a much worse performance. Number one, only four of our panellists placed it in their bottom two, compared to five for Williams and seven for stake. And number two, one of our panel placed Hülkenberg and Magnussen in their individual top four, skewing them out of what was otherwise a very close battle inside the bottom three. That panellist was former Jordan, Stewart and Jaguar technical director Gary Anderson, who feels both Hülkenberg and Magnussen have shown a real turn of speed, and because they both well know what it's like to be out of a drive in F1, are able to work together without creating disharmony inside the team. Gary's not alone in feeling this lineup is being held back by a poor car, but there's also a feeling among some of our panel that Magnussen in particular is underperforming, that both drivers have maybe had their motivation dented by the chronic struggles of Haas, and that key individual limitations, Magnussen struggles with the turning characteristics of these ground effect cars, and Hülkenberg's well-known tyre management problems, place a ceiling on the potential of this pairing. Number 7. Alpha Tauri, or whatever it's about to be called. Yuki Tsunoda and Daniel Ricciardo, 54 points, up two places. It wouldn't have taken much to push this pairing into our overall top six, but the principal doubt seems to be whether Ricardo has actually recovered his best form. There's no doubt Sonoda has been a shade faster since they became teammates, and given Ricardo's more impressive track record compared to the likes of Pierre Gasly and Nick de Vries, that level of performance is undoubtedly enhancing Sonoda's individual reputation. The big question then is whether Ricardo can do what he did in Mexico last year more often. If he can, that raises the potential of this lineup quite significantly and puts him firmly in the running to claim Sergio Perez's Red Bull seat in 2025. But that still lingering doubt over whether Ricardo is really back to his pre McLaren best is the main thing holding this pairing back from a higher spot in our ranking. Number 6, Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll. 74 points, no change. 
Seven of our nine panellists placed this pairing in their top six, and Alonso and Stroll fell just seven points short of making the top five in our ranking. Praise for Alonso's contribution to this lineup's potency was typically effusive, calling him elite, astonishingly good, and world class. Age is showing no sign of catching up with Alonso yet, and we're pretty much universal in our feeling he is still operating at a level consistent with the top tier of current F1 drivers. It's Stroll doing the damage here. As Ed Stroll points out, Stroll's inconsistency cost Aston Martin fourth place in the 2023 Constructors' Championship, so the team's potential for better in 2024 basically rests on whether Stroll can up his game and on a consistent basis. Certainly, no one is writing Stroll off yet, but the jury is most definitely still out on whether he can make the step forward that Aston Aston Martin really needs. Number 5. Alpine, Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon. 80 points, no change. Only one of our nine panellists placed this pairing outside the top six, and that consistency of opinion was crucial in edging the Alpine drivers ahead of the less well-balanced pairing of Alonso and Stroll. But the gap to the top four was still substantial, suggesting neither Gasly nor Ocon are considered by our panel to be properly elite F1 drivers, but rather a duo of very strong number twos, and that is holding Alpine back. They are one of the most evenly matched lineups on the grid, one that has shown it can work well together despite a difficult personal history, and both Gasly and Ocon have made occasional podium cameos in a marginal top 10 car, suggesting they are capable of excellent peaks of performance. But truthfully, neither would realistically constitute an upgrade for any of the championship's other top six teams, except possibly Aston Martin if Stroll remains inconsistent. Number four, Red Bull, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, 111 points, down one place. Red Bull's driver lineup was voted fourth best by all bar two of our panel, one of whom voted them the best outright pairing, while the other ranked them the second worst. What wasn't in dispute is that Perez is creating serious baggage for Red Bull that Verstappen is having to overcome by himself, and the average result is probably about right when you consider how much weaker Perez has been compared to the weakest drivers at Ferrari, McLaren or Mercedes, and even Alpine potentially. The argument put forward for declaring this the absolute best lineup on the grid is that Verstappen is so far clear of the rest in F1 right now that he more than makes up for the inadequacies of Perez. That's fair to a point, but ignores the fact that if these other teams close the performance deficit to Red Bull, then Perez will become exponentially greater a liability in Red Bull's second car. At the opposite end of the spectrum was an argument put forward by Gary Anderson, who declared, in his view, no one is capable of driving a car suited to Verstappen's extreme driving style, and therefore Red Bull is, in effect, a one-car team. To be fair, based on his 2023 results, it does look as though Verstappen is capable of winning the Constructors' title on his own. It's also probably true that most drivers couldn't get near Verstappen in the same car, but there's arguably at least four or five in F1 who could, in theory, do a significantly better job than Perez is doing right now. Number three, McLaren, Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri, 155 points up one place. McLaren's lineup is upwardly mobile in our ranking this year, thanks mainly to Piastri showing the world that the hype surrounding him before he began his rookie F1 season was absolutely justified. There are a couple of votes for this to rank as the absolute best lineup on the grid right now, another for it to be considered the second best, but most of our panel ranked it third. Holding this pairing back is a lingering doubt about Norris and the many high-profile qualifying errors he made last season, as well as Piastri's clear deficit to Norris managing tyres over a race distance. Are Norris's errors just a natural function of McLaren's especially edgy car, or a consequence of being put under much more pressure than he became used to with Daniel Ricciardo? That's a question even McLaren has been asking itself. Piastri clearly has the raw ability to help propel this lineup to the top spot in our ranking, maybe as early as 2025, but first he needs to convince the majority of our panel that his very obvious race pace weakness relative to Norris is fixable rather than endemic. Number two, Ferrari, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, 167 points, no change. There were a couple of votes for the Ferrari drivers to be ranked number one on our list, but they fell 21 points short of claiming top spot in a very tight race among our top three. There's pretty much universal agreement that Leclerc is the star of the show here, and it's the way Sainz complements Leclerc's raw speed with a more measured and technically astute approach that makes this probably the best balanced lineup on the grid. Both are definitely being let down by the inferiority of Ferrari's cars, no question. But in terms of this lineup ranking as the absolute best on the grid, you could ask legitimate questions about Sainz's ultimate speed. Leclerc is a ridiculous benchmark, it's true, and Sainz does a commendable job to get as close as he does, but there's a clear feeling that when Leclerc is driving a car to his liking, there's simply no way Sainz can match him. 
Having started 183 Grand Prix, Sainz is about a third more experienced in F1 terms than George Russell and Oscar Piastri combined, so the threshold for Sainz to further improve compared to these two, Piastri especially, is theoretically much lower. It's the greater potential in these two younger drivers compared to Sainz that ultimately just brings Ferrari up short of claiming top spot. Number 1. Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. 187 points, no change. The Mercedes drivers retain top spot in our ranking for 2024, but not by much. A minority of four of our panellists voted this lineup the best on the grid, but much like with the 2023 season itself, it was the consistency of scoring that elevated Hamilton and Russell in the final standings. Eight of our nine panellists had them in the top two, and the other vote was top three. The general feeling being that this is still overall the most impressive lineup on the grid, only looking a bit less sure footed than it did when Russell joined the team in 2022. Russell's slightly concerning frequency for errors in races, coupled with Hamilton looking more limited than ever by Mercedes' ongoing technical shortcomings, has clearly put a small dent in our panel's confidence in this lineup. Even though he doubted himself at times, there's no real question Hamilton still possesses ability up there with the absolute best on the grid, and his hungry pole position last year showcased that. And Russell actually averages out fractionally faster than Hamilton over one lap during their two seasons together so far. When you weigh that against Piastri's inexperience, Perez's underperformance and Sainz's pace deficit to the clerk, it's clear why Mercedes can still count on at least one element of its F1 operation remaining superior to the rest on the current grid. So the final standings then for our 2024 F1 driver lineups ranking. In first place, Mercedes with 187 points. Second place, Ferrari with 167 points. Third, McLaren with 155 points. Fourth, Red Bull with 111 points. Fifth, Alpine with 80 points. Sixth, Aston Martin with 74 points. Seventh, Alpha Tauri with 54 points. Eighth, Haas with 34 points. Ninth, Williams with 25 points. And tenth, Stake with 22 points.